Recently, I took some time away from playing Destiny 2 because I felt burnt out playing a game that was stale, less than innovative, and for all intents and purposes, largely solved. For the last six months, covering this game has been brutal. You all know the issues, I'm not going to waste your time rehashing them here. As a creator, I've got a front row seat to wider community sentiment in the form of video performance, streams, comments, analytics, and my own Discord. I've been here a long time and I do not remember a time when it has ever been this bad. And rightly so. It was when the final shape was delayed that I started to mentally check out. I got my remaining projects done and logged out of the game. It's been exactly one month at the time of filming this video that I did so, and in that time I caught up with what everyone else has been doing. I played the finals. I played Halo Infinite. I aggressively spread democracy in Helldivers, though because I've been in Dubai for the last two years, I was a little fuzzy on the mechanics. I decided to log into Destiny 2 the other day to play with my stream viewers, and I learned something that I really wasn't ready for. My month away opened my eyes to some truths that I had forgotten, and some harsher truths about where I am in my world. I don't want to make this a bigger deal than it actually is, okay? I'm not going to be dramatic and say Bungie needs to do this or the game needs to change. I'm not going to make demands. I'm just here to document my journey. I'm here to tell you what I went through and what I learned and, you know, what's, what's in store for my future moving forward. If I end up coming off as preachy or apologetic, I do apologize. I'm still learning how to use my face 32 years later. And in the spirit of transparency, I got to do a YouTuber thing real quick. I got to talk about another game because they sponsored this video. This video wouldn't happen without them. And thankfully, it's a game I actually really enjoy playing. So, thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. You've got over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 different nations, from the biplanes and armored cars of the 1920s to the fighter jets and main battle tanks of today. The incredibly detailed vehicles, graphics, and authentic sound design give you an immersive feeling the likes of which few games can replicate. But don't just take it from me. Join the over 70 million players who play this game and dive into the breathtaking experience that is War Thunder for yourself. If you're a fan of military history, very few games come close to what's on offer here. The game has a real knack for attention to detail. The damage models are so intricate that it allows you to seriously damage or disable key systems within the vehicles themselves to give you or your opponents the edge. Also, there's an in-depth customization system which allows you to place camouflages, historical markings, and so much more to really help make every vehicle your own. The best part is that the game is free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Use my link in the pinned comment below and for a limited time, new and returning players after six months will get a massive bonus pack that includes includes items like the exclusive vehicle decorator, Eagle of Valor, 7 days free premium, and 100,000 silver lions. Thank you again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to it. The first lesson I learned from my time away was that games are meant to be fun. When you live, breathe, and sleep one game, you will eventually forget what hooked you in the first place. After a certain point, novelty is replaced by familiarity. The hardest parts of the game become familiar. Grandmaster Nightfalls weren't hard anymore, nor were raids. The only thing that genuinely enthused me was trials, but with population issues and Middle Eastern matchmaking issues, I found myself spending more time frustrated rather than having fun. And when I realized that, I also realized that it was my cue to take a step back from everything. And I wanted nothing to do with creation for a while because what kind of content am I going to create if it's not actively giving me joy? So what did I do in the meantime? Well, I caught up with my backlog. As a Halo child, I went back to a much improved Halo Infinite and found myself spending hours in PvP. I don't know how or why, but it's incredibly easy to lose time to Infinite like the Halos of old. At least for me. The one more game feeling was back with a vengeance and I could feel myself wanting to put time in and improve day after day, a feeling Destiny 2 has forgotten to encourage in its own player base once you're past a certain level. I felt like a teenager again, playing way too much and getting concerned texts from my family to see if I was still alive. And the answer is no, I was getting my head blown off repeatedly by the same mother- Another game that gave me severe one more gameism was the finals. The idea of the entire game being a massive game show was such a breath of fresh air for me. The visuals and gameplay just hit right, even if it didn't feel as solid as my main game. Of course, the game isn't perfect and it has plenty of issues, some technical and some ethical, but the core offering is incredibly solid for what it is. And I also learned that I can't aim for shit and I suck massive horse cock. And because of the internet being the internet, I downloaded the Democracy Simulator Helldivers, a game where you're a pretty cool guy, you go kill aliens and you don't afraid of anything. And I ended up loving every second of my playthrough, even though this was so not my cup of tea at all. Playing mostly solo, it definitely seems like it's a game that needs friends to be at its best. 
sort of like another live service multiplayer. Despite all of that, with Helldivers, I found myself invested in a world and a ridiculous scenario that I just wanted to come back to every day because it was just fun. Like with Halo and the finals, I wasn't immersed in their respective communities. I had no plans to stream or make any kind of content with their games. I played them because they put a smile on my face for the first time in a very long time. And after playing Destiny 2 for so long, I realized that it wasn't the way the game made me feel that kept me logging in day after day. What really kept me logging in every day was the memory of the first time it all clicked for me. Memories of my first PvP kill. Memories of the first time I got a streak in PvP. Memories of the first time I ever made a build and it just worked. Memories of great times with good friends. Powerful memories that I was desperately trying to recreate the feeling of with each play session. I was forcing the fun to happen when the reality is that if something is truly fun to you, you'll know it immediately. And you know, sometimes finding the fun is just a small variation of a familiar formula, but other times it can require wholesale change. You could also get ideas and suggestions from other people on how to have fun, but you can also have the absolute life sucked out of you too. It seems that over the last few years, much of what constitutes Destiny community discourse revolves around the idea of potential and how it's being wasted. Everything in this game that you experience could be better. The weapons could be more powerful. The build systems could be more complex. The variety of the gameplay could be greater. PvP could not suck. And the noise from everyone about everything is deafening, especially if the noise itself is valid. The problems with Destiny 2 really have piled up to the point where it genuinely seems like it's the only thing people want to talk about right now. And as a creator who has contributed to that noise in their own way, it's been difficult to look at the analytics and come to the conclusion that being negative is one of the few guaranteed ways to put food on the table. I'm doing, I'm literally doing it right now with the title of this video. I helped make this reality. I helped make the bed. And here we are. And in lying down in said bed, I found my own love of the game deeply affected. I brought other people's thoughts, opinions, and emotions into my escapism, and it turned what was previously minor apathy into full-blown disgust. Over time, I'd finish my Destiny 2 sessions in a worse mood than when I'd started. I'd let my love of the conversation and my need to be social turn me away from the game that gave me my friends to begin with. Now, I thought I was being soft, you know, letting video games and people's opinions about video games ruin my mood. But I realized from my time away that this was literally years in the making. It wasn't a case of seeing it once, twice, or thrice and being severely affected. I buried all of it and it finally took its toll. I had to disconnect and walk away, and I did my best to enjoy the other games as a pure consumer, away from any discourse. I decided to play those games and enjoy them for what they were, not for what they could be. Of course things got on my nerves a bit with each of these games, but I didn't feel compelled to complain about it to anyone, and after a while I realized that my fun was lasting longer and my annoyances vanished quicker. And this is the second lesson I learned, to really enjoy games for a long time in a really meaningful and personal way, don't involve yourself in the conversation around them. Now, it can be compelling to want to share your thoughts and experiences with other people. It's a very powerful feeling of kinship and camaraderie that comes with doing so. And it can feel nigh impossible to not do that, especially with how many games are integrated with social media these days. When you only have your own thoughts, it can be lonely. But when you only have your own thoughts, that's when they're the most pure. The only person's thoughts that really matter at the end of the day are your own. Most of us didn't start out hyper-connected. It happened slowly over time. We looked up guides or how-tos, we started watching one or two creators regularly, and as we became more comfortable spending time online dedicated to this game, we found a community or multiple that suited us. And before we knew it, we were making friends, or at the very least talking to like-minded individuals about this game. Other people shape our perspective as much as we help to shape theirs. But when the game's in a bad way, so is the community. And I'm not saying this to preemptively reject negativity or paint negativity as this bad, bad thing. Balance is incredibly important for healthy discourse. And all of Destiny 2's criticisms are valid, more than valid. But you can't deny that it gets to be exhausting. And feeling this much negativity over a pastime? It just isn't worth it. Because whether you like it or not, at the end of the day, all of us are still here because we're all operating on a very basic subtext. And that subtext is, when all is said and done, 
Destiny 2 is actually a pretty good video game. If you're new to this channel, you've probably just heard that line and thought, oh, here we go again. It's a bait and switch. It's a toxic positivity video. And I just want to reassure you that I am someone who has always and forever will strive for the middle ground. Where some cry wolf and bloody murder and others paint rainbows and butterflies, I advocate for balance. After all, it's compromise that moves us along. And if you get that reference, I hope you have a wonderful night's sleep and you wake up with less back pain. When I say Destiny 2 is a pretty good game, everyone can point to something that works really well. The art, the music, the weapons, the gunplay, the abilities, even in their current fashion, the builds. The gameplay is stale, but still very solid. When your build works, you feel unstoppable. When all the right pieces line up, the PvP feels unlike any other out there. The whole game, in the right moments, delivers highs that few other games can reach. These highs are so good that it hooks us, and we spend days, weeks, or even months chasing that same feeling, hoping it's as good as the last time. And we all know this, and we are all addicted to it in one form or another. Even those of us that quit, we know how good it is, and we know how good it can be. It's precisely because it's so addictive that we quit, because eventually the highs wear off, or simply the time cost of achieving said highs becomes untenable. Or, more egregiously, our favorite things get taken away from us and thrown into a vault, never to be seen again. Taking a break, and then coming back to this game, reminds you of two truths. One, that Destiny 2's highs are still as potent as ever. The game's basics never really went away, we just built up a tolerance for it. And two, no game should ever be played with the intent of it being the only game. Moderation is the key to sustained happiness. It's fine to indulge in your preferred vices from time to time, but it mustn't ever become routine. Vices are called vices because of how tightly they hold on to you. That hold ruins joy and can turn joyous moments of escapism into a call for help. Being a player and a creator, that's what happened to me. My content became bitter. I became bitter. And I became a reason people didn't want to play. Either because I was representative of a jaded player base that wanted validation, or I was elaborating on all the different ways that it's gone to hell in a handbasket. I wanted joy in my life again, and quitting was the best decision I made in that regard. I don't mainline this game anymore, it's now on a rota with all the others. I still enjoy the taste of this particular brand of dopamine, but now I know how much it takes hold of me, and I can keep it at arm's length. And normally, it's said that you should avoid contact with anything that can make you relapse. But that's when I learned the final and hardest truth. This game just doesn't hit as hard as it used to. I still love it all. I can still have fun in Destiny 2. But like I mentioned earlier, it's the memories that motivate me more than the game itself. In my 20s, I used to play this game for weekends at a time. I'd play with my clan for every activity, LFG for when they weren't around, and celebrate any time someone cancelled a plan in real life because it meant I could fill that time with destiny. Trials was my stomping ground, raids were my social spaces. Now, I'm 32 years old. The game's changed a lot. It's gone from a DLC model, to a seasonal model, to soon an episodic model. The story has gone from intimate and mysterious to bombastic and cataclysmic. The nature of the storytelling has gone from tight and rhythmic to sporadic and scattered. We all deal with change in different ways, but a cruel tenet of life is that as time goes on, the magic doesn't feel as special anymore. Be it through overexposure or circumstance, how you felt at 15 is more intense than at 25, which is more intense than 35, and so on and so forth. The only thing that's consistent through the ages is wishing you felt the same way you did in the past, when the flames burned brighter with more intent. With Destiny, I wish I still felt the same way about it. I, I really genuinely do. I still love this game. But time and circumstances have motivated me to be more efficient with my time. I don't have the luxury anymore of waiting for weeks to recapture the same feeling I did when I was 22 or 23, playing this franchise for the first time. It's time better spent actually living well. And Destiny 2 does not live well with me anymore. So, the final shape will probably be my last expansion as a creator. Probably even as a player too. And I'm going to sail into the sunset knowing full well that this period of my life was incredibly fulfilling. And I'll always be grateful to the friends that I made along the way. And even if I lose you, the community that has stuck by me through all these years, or even a new viewer coming to the end of this video, 
I'll be grateful for every second that you stuck by me. You can find me over at Twitch Tuesday to Saturday, but I'm not going anywhere just yet. I still have a lot of Destiny 2 content I want to make. After all, we can't go out on a whimper now, can we? And if you've made it to the end of this video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. And thank you again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Like I said before, the game is free on PlayStation, Xbox, and Windows. Be sure to click the link in the description below to get the bonuses on screen now. As always, a massive thank you to the patrons for continuing to make these videos possible. I'm Ascendant Nomad, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.